Hey my dear friends, once again welcome back to the channel. I am Gaurav here and that's the 15th video of this series. So in today's video we're gonna make our projectile to behave like a bullet. And also we will improve our weapon code to more cleaner and easier to understand. So let's get started. But before we begin, as I always say, if you are new in this channel, then please check out our previous videos first. Also subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon. It's absolutely free. So in the last video, I was forgot to mention that we need to add rigid body component on the projectile prefab. Otherwise, it is not gonna fall on the ground. And you already know that rigid body is all about physics related stuff like gravity, rotation and other natural forces, isn't it? So let's add rigid body on projectile prefab. And now we are ready to give our projectile the ability to behave like a bullet. So let's create a script and name it projectile. Open it in the visible studio or visible code. Okay, let me tell you what we want here. Look, first of all, we need to get rigid body components so that we can apply physics related forces on our projectiles. Okay, so Let's create a rigid body type variable, serialized field, private, rigid body and name it RB. And here in the start function, we will give a force to our projectile. Like we want to move our projectile to move forward in the Z axis, right? So here RB and then we will take velocity cause we want an immediate change in the projectile's velocity. So that the projectile will move like a, like a bullet and then equal transform dot forward uh, it's equivalent to 0 0 on x and y axis and 1 on the z axis because we want to manipulate a projectile's position on the z axis so that's why we are using transform dot forward okay and now we need to multiply with force like how fast our projectile will move forward so let's create an another variable and it's gonna be float type variable so serialized field private float and name it launch force and 50 should be fine i think multiply it here and now let's head back to the unity and wait for a second here on the projectile prefab we see that we have an empty slot for a rigid body so let's drag that rigid body here and now we are ready to go hit the play button and shoot some projectile perfect now our projectile can move like a bullet but now another new issue has cropped up and what's that? Well, the issue is that because now we can spawn many projectile clones in the game and they are just hanging out there without any reason and just taking so much data. Because we are rapidly spawning so much projectiles, so basically we are just increasing these unnecessary game objects and also they are taking so much memory and graphic rendering process. It means at the end our game will be crashed and that's not a good sign for any game, right? We don't want our game to crash, right? So how to deal that situation? Well actually it's quite easy. All we have to do is delete these projectiles in certain amount of time after they spawn. Right? So let's do that. In the update we will use destroy function in order to delete these projectiles. Actually we use destroy function whenever we want to delete any object from the scene. And look at that. It takes two parameters. First one is the object which we want to delete. And the second one is for time. And now here, we will give that game object which we want to delete. So here we will pass game object. And the game object refers to that object where this script is attached. And now let's create an another float type variable. Serialize field, private float, destroy after seconds. And here I will give it 5 seconds. So that the projectile will be deleted in the 5 seconds after spawning get that variable here and save it now head back to the unity and let it compile now hit play button and and search some projectiles now look at that these game objects are deleting themselves that's awesome so we have done bullet related stuff and now let's optimize our weapon script so first of all get rid of these variables cause here i'm gonna create an empty array but actually there is nothing wrong to use separate variables for spawn points, it's just fine. But the problem appears if we want many same kind of variables like 5 or 10 spawn points or maybe more, then that's gonna be very tedious work, isn't it? So that's why I'm creating an empty array. And also creating an empty array is very easy. All we just need to add square brackets. Let me show you how. 
seedless field, private, transform. And now here we will add square brackets and then variable name project tile spawn point. That's how we create an empty array. And now in the update function, get rid of these lines too. We don't need them anymore. Now here we will create for each loop, for each transform spawn points in what in what in that array in that empty array which is project tile spawn point so as you see that we just created that local variable it means we want to access spawn points which will be in the array i know areas can be a little complicated for beginners but don't worry it's just normal soon you will be comfortable with an arrays so now here we will instantiate our project tiles instantiate project tile prefab and then spawn point dot position the this one and then the orientation which is transform dot rotation and that's it from the script side now head back to the unity and here you see that on the weapon script we have an empty list so now here you're thinking that how we will give spawn points to that empty list it's also very easy you just need to drag these spawn points here on the list look let me show you Drag these spawn points one by one here, right on the name, or, or just lock that tab. You see up here, there is a little tiny lock on the top right corner. Click on it and now select both spawn points and drag them here, right on the name. Very easy, right? And yeah, don't forget to unlock that tab. Otherwise, you will be keep scratching your head and thinking that what, what happened here. Now I think everything looks perfect. So... Let's hit the play button and that's awesome. Everything's working just fine. But wait, now let me show you the best part of creating array list. Look, for now we have just two guns, right? But what if we want more than two guns? So, cause of array list, now we can easily add more guns on our player. Just duplicate these arms and move them a little bit up. And now you just need to add these spawn points in the array list. Now let's see how it performs. Look at that. That's so cool, isn't it? Well, my dear friends, that's all in this video. And in the next video, we will start working on enemy health system and player health system. So till then, keep learning, keep practicing, and I'll meet you in the further upcoming videos. For now, see you later.